Hi, this is Paula from CHE. These are our news for Shetty Camp and surrounding areas for the last week of January 2021. On today's segment, while the easing of COVID restrictions means for disco skate evenings at the Cabotel Arena, also issues with vaccine delivery. But first, we received great news this week in Shetty Camp as the province announced it will be funding expansions of the foyer per set. The announcement came on Friday afternoon. Seven facilities have been identified for immediate work. Premier McNeil said the government reviewed studies about infection prevention and control at long-term care facilities and came to the conclusion that each resident should live in a single room and use an individual bathroom. It is earmarking $10.5 million annually for the project. Foyer Perficet administrators requested $5.1 million in total. Municipal Councilor and Vice President of the Seniors Committee at Inverness County, Alfred Poirier welcomes the news and credits years of community effort. The Homes Administration initially made the funding request in 2015. Here's Alfred Poirier. It's been a long road, you know, five, six years at it, and with uh, the administrator, uh, Mona Poirier, and uh, we worked at it. She did the plan, she did most of the work. All I tried to do was help on the lobbying part of it and assistant uh, vice president of the board for Homes Board in Inverness County. We try it all, everybody, uh, you know, that uh, we uh, could talk to and then the people got involved and uh, this is not a one-man band or one-man show you know like we had vision 2020 that was organized we had community matters we had uh, a lot of support from the community from everywhere you know from east marguerite uh, to pleasant bay and uh, within and even uh, you know across the county and one thing that really, I think, put uh, a little bit more wind in our sails was that uh, the COVID-19 opened up an awful lot of doors. Not the doors, but uh, it opened the reality, what the seniors were going through and their facilities, etc. So I think that made the government, as, and you can see this, not only provincially, but federally too, that uh, it is, you know, a, a necessity now to look after our seniors and to make that they, are, they make sure that they live with dignity and respect and uh, etc. I'm right there, senior, so hopefully, if I live long enough and I can be there and uh, have my room all by myself, watch TV and watch CNN, and th that would be great. So it it's all good. It's a happy day for the community of uh, Pleasant Bay, Shattercamp, San Joseph du Moine, Kepler Moine, East Marguerite, and uh, you know, further up to Inverness, you know, if they feel, because they're coming from everywhere. So it's a, it's a big plus and it's a, it's a good day for Shetty Camp in general and all the communities for sure. Although there are no details about when the work will start, the government said construction at seven facilities across the province, including the foyer, should be completed by 2024-2025. Just a side note, during our interview, Councillor Poirier wanted to let residents know that he's got a new office at the Trois Pignons, and he's available in person on Mondays and Fridays starting at 10.30 a.m., and also by appointment. His phone number remains the same. Nominations are now open for the Lieutenant Governor's Nova Scotia Francophonie Award. Offered for the first time this year, the award recognizes citizens whose contributions have made a difference in the Francophone community. There are three categories, an award for a Francophone, also, for a Francophile, that's someone who is not a Francophone but supports and promotes French language and culture. There's also a category for youth, someone under the age of 25. Submission forms can be found on the Acadian Affairs website and the deadline is February 26. Nova Scotia has received no vaccines this past week due to Pfizer's delay. We learned yesterday that there will be a delay affecting many countries, including Canada. Now, the federal government is saying there will be delays with deliveries of the Moderna vaccine as well. The country will be receiving 180,000 doses this coming week, which is 78% worth of what was initially arranged. For now, 
Nova Scotia said it's going to stick with the initial schedule and that the recommendation of the Federal Department of Health and the Virology Expert Panel that helps with decision making. According to Dr. Strang, the priority is for everyone who got the first shot to get the second one on time. So it's already reserving vaccines for that second dose. The expert panel says that the alternative, giving the first shot to a larger number of people, will leave many to be only partly immunized while COVID is still going around. And it will risk the breeding of new strains of the virus. Nova Scotia recently announced the easing of some COVID restrictions for sports and cultural events. As of Friday, people can now gather in groups of 60 without social distancing. It makes a world of difference to the Cabo Chol Arena and its disco skate Saturdays. Here's our conversation with Thierry Camus, Vice President of the Arena's Board, and what it means for both the organization and the community at large. When we spoke earlier this week, the number of people allowed had gone from 25 to 50. It is now 60. Here's Thierry Camus. Disco Skate is an activity that we began uh, last year. Uh, one of our current board members, uh, Mr. Robert Lelievre, a teacher at Inverness School, brought it forward as possibly a, uh, an activity that we could do. It was done in other arenas and it proved to be fairly success successful. So last year, uh, we uh, threw it out as a possibility. We did ask some groups if they wanted to sponsor the ice time, one hour of ice time a week, and that the our, our young people or our students would be able to come and skate. So it Really, we had uh, many, many interested groups that wanted to uh, pay for one hour of ice a week, and it was successful last year. And we this year we continued it again. Uh, we moved from a Friday night to a Saturday night, so students basically from grade seven to twelve are uh, eligible to come and skate on Saturday nights. Is the event a fundraiser for the arena? I wouldn't say it's, it's, I wouldn't say it is a fundraiser as such, but it's definitely a way for us to uh, rent more ice time. So it, it does help us um, increase our revenues based on our rentals. And um, it definitely helps us cover some of our costs and so forth, because uh, most of the time that ice time would not be rented. So really it is extra revenue for us that we normally would not have gotten, but uh, yes, it definitely helps and it uh, allows us to get more money to be able to maintain our building, uh, provide better service. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were able to purchase a new scoreboard uh, during December, I think, and it was installed in early January. So it is projects like that, that these revenues help us be able to put together. So even though it's not a fundraiser, it definitely is a good source of revenue for us. When you say rentals, do you mean the skates? Can people rent the skates? No, I'm sorry. Skates are not uh, uh, available at the arena themselves. Uh, students don't have to bring their own skates, but that's it. The rest is all provided for them. There are no admission costs or anything for them. It's Everything is uh, paid for by these the businesses that sponsor the one-hour ice time, but they do need to have skates. So let's talk about the role of sports in the community. Well, I think we all know that sports play a very important role in our lives, not only as students, but as adults. But I would say even a little larger than that, uh, physical activities play a, a major role in our lives. So even though some students and adults don't play in what I would call sports type of events, they do are physically active. So Disco Skate has provided an opportunity for our students uh, to enjoy uh, one hour of physical activity without having to necessarily uh, play in competitive sports or being in sports. And when I say our students, uh, it mainly are the students from our area. So we have st students from NDA school and we have students from the nearby Anglophone school, CBHA, that do uh, come in and benefit from that activity. So it is really good for them to have a noting. I know during COVID, uh, getting together has been difficult. Even playing traditional sports has been difficult. Even accessing areas to participate in, in sports or physical activity has been more challenging. So this, the, this disco night provides an, uh, an opportunity for students to come, be physically active, but at the same time, socialize and see some of their friends because that also has been an issue for some of them. And 
let's be real, it's been difficult for adults and students as well. So overall, it's great. It gives them a, a place where they can come, relax, but also, uh, like I say, maintain their physical activity and sh you know, meet friends, share with friends and so forth, which is really, really important at this time. This week, uh, the province announced that now sports events can welcome 50 people at a time. How has that impacted you and the arena? Well, I think uh, I think it's definitely made life easier for some of the uh, organizers uh, of events that use the arena. For example, being allowed to have 50 people on the on the ice at one time definitely made it easier for some sport teams that had uh, possibly 20 to 30 participants at one time. We have events like family skating, family groups that want to use the ice that really it was challenging to only have 25 people on the ice because you have to remember some of these activities really involve really young students or young kids. So parents really need to be with them. So all of a sudden only being able to have 25 made it very difficult. And we saw some of the groups that normally would rent the ice stop during that period of time because it was just not manageable but now that we've returned to 50 uh it's made it a lot easier for them and they're, they're returning now as well the ability to have games uh has made it easier for hockey teams particularly to return to normal activity unfortunately uh no spectators are allowed in the building so that is making it challenging for some parents uh, and grandparents like myself that would like to go watch but we have to respect the rules and we understand that at least our young people and adults that use the ice can now with a greater number of participants. Um, I know locally uh, having it's made a difference. Unfortunately, for, pe for people that come from away for hockey games, for example, the fact that no spectators are allowed, that means that they have to drop their children off, then they have to wait and then pick them up again. So that is a challenge in itself. But we do understand the, that to better protect the security of everyone, that sometimes it is better uh, to be safe than sorry, put it that way. So we hope to return to normal activities uh, sooner and later. But at this point, the 50 uh, people on the ice at one time or using the facility makes it a whole lot easier for a lot of people. So how do you sign up? Do you send an email? What do you do if you want to participate? For the disco night? Now, all you have to do is basically show up. Uh, the ice is covered. The co ice cost is covered by organizations um, and businesses that do cover the ice. So uh, students just show up at a certain time. They come in. They wear their mask to come into the arena. Then they step onto the ice and they listen to music. There's disco lights there available, and for an hour they can skate, no charge, and that's all they have to. do. They don't have to pre-register or any of that. They just show up with the 50 people. Uh, definitely made it easier to accommodate everyone. Before, we when we went down to 25, it was a first come first serve basis because on certain nights we did have more than 25 people. So now being able to uh, receive 50 makes it a whole lot easier for them and easier for everyone. Anything you'd like to add? Yes, a couple of things. Uh, number one, we are truly appreciative of all the organizations and businesses that do support Disco Night. Uh, it is great for our young people to be able to have a place to come without costs being associated to them. So we are very fortunate that our community really supports that particular event. As well, NERCA is very grateful for the support it gets to, it, to its various fundraising events, none up as including uh, Chase Dace, which we've done very well over the years and that those funds have gone to make improvements to our golf course, buy new equipment, re, uh, repair what was there. Uh, part of it, like we just said, buying the new clock, doing some uh, renovations inside the arena, just being able to offer better quality service to our community. So we are truly appreciative of the community support. This year as well, we are going to proceed with uh, the Bonanza draw again, uh, which had been an annual thing but we had to stop last year because of COVID. This year, uh, we are going to keep selling the Bonanza tickets, but there will be no dance uh, on site as we normally did in past years. There'll be a virtual ticket draw with the same number of prizes and possibly a few extra prizes added. Uh, ticket sales will probably begin in this spring as we did in the past, but there'll be more information and details coming out 
uh, later on. But there will be a bonanza draw. And again, those the funds that we do accumulate through um, the bonanza draw goes right back to either the golf or the arena uh, to replace existing uh, equipment um, that we otherwise would not be able to do so. Those funds go a long, long way to maintain the service we can provide to the community. Those are our news for the week. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. We'll leave you with a view of the Cape Breton Highlands on Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching.